Maintain Mindfulness During Experiences by Vin Renz. There are innumerable stories of how masters worked like this with negative experiences and transformed them into catalysts for realization. Therefore, no matter what experiences you encounter, whether they are considered positive or negative, they are all opportunities to boost our spiritual practice. Traditionally, It's said that for a real practitioner, it's not the negative experiences, but the good ones that bring obstacles. The experiences that you consider good, however, can lead to attachment. If you cling to the state of absence of thought, then after death, you might be reborn in the realm of mental blankness. And once you leave there, you might be reincarnated as a snail and remain trapped in the ocean for countless eons. This is not good. Therefore, if you cling to the state of absence of thought, you are in danger. This is not enlightenment. It is merely an experience. Don't cling to it. If you cling to bliss, you will also become immersed in it. And after death, you will be reborn in the form realm and remain there for numerous eons. So, negative experiences may not necessarily be obstacles because when negative experiences arise, we are alert and mindful. We apply remedies to our minds and prevent ourselves from being swayed by negative experiences. However, when positive experiences arise, we don't apply remedies. Not only do we fail to apply remedies, but we also cling to and become immersed in them. When things are going well, You've got to be especially careful and mindful. The smoother things go, the more careful we should be. Because when encountering negative experiences or adversities, we tend to become tense, careful and highly focused to deal with them. However, when positive experiences arise, we often become careless and less alert At this time, devils may take advantage of the opportunity to sneak in. Therefore, when things are going well, you have got to be especially mindful and careful, as smooth sailing is difficult to pass through, so that you don't become complacent or overconfident. Overconfidence will foster ego. Remember what Dajjom Rinpoche said to me when I was in the middle of a very powerful experience. Don't get too excited. In the end, it's neither good nor bad. When you experience some extraordinary states, such as seeing the radiant Buddha or an image of the Buddha, or even receiving empowerment and blessings, you should never become attached. If you become attached, you may be influenced by devils. When positive experiences arise, you may become excited, thinking that you are about to achieve realization. When you see Amitabha Buddha radiating light to pick you up, once you get excited, devils will take advantage of this opportunity to sneak in because you have become attached. If you have become attached, the next time someone appears, it may not be Buddha, but a devil disguised as Buddha. You will become more and more immersed in this experience and deeply attached to it. You might go around telling others that Amitabha Buddha has come to pick you up, but in reality, you have already been blinded by devils. So, this is also a dangerous situation. While chanting Buddha's name, 
The appearing of the Buddha does not arise from attachment, but from bodhicitta, a pure mind that seeks nothing. Only when you chant Buddha's name with bodhicitta will Amitabha Buddha appear. If you lose bodhicitta and cling to good states, positive experiences, you will be influenced by devils. Therefore, it all depends on your mind. The key to discerning whether the arrived Buddha is a true Buddha, a false Buddha or a devil lies in your mind. What comes forth is determined by the state of your mind. If your mind is influenced by devils, then what you attract will undoubtedly be external devils. If you are chanting Buddha's name with genuine Buddhacitta, then what you attract will undoubtedly be the authentic Amitabha Buddha. The mind and the object correspond to each other. He knew I was becoming attached to the experience. That attachment, like any other, has to be cut through. What we have to learn in both meditation and in life is to be free of attachment to the good experiences and free of aversion to the negative ones. We need to pay special attention to this, both during our meditation practice and in our daily lives. Even though we may not have much experience in meditation, we do have numerous experiences in samsara. In samsara, there are positive experiences, such as gaining wealth and prosperity, as well as negative experiences, such as being diagnosed with a terminal illness and losing family and possessions. How do you confront such adversities? They are also experiences. How do we face these various experiences in samsara? In meditation, there are subtler, new experiences, both positive and negative. Whether these experiences are positive or negative, we should use mindfulness to deal with them. Maintain mindfulness and vigilance, and don't get lost in these experiences. <laughs>